Well, if you do come to the Snaring Room River campground and it's full, don't panic because there's this whole section that you can see behind me here. It looks just like a barren desert almost. It's kind of all wide open, but this is kind of the overflow camping section. You can see here there's uh, five sections, three for RVs and two for like tent trailers or just tents. Sections D and E are more at the far back in there. I've rarely seen this full. It's not as pretty uh, of a setup, but you do have probably one of the best views of Morro Peak and Hawk Mountain here, uh, completely unobstructed, no trees at all. People probably don't like it as much because there's no trees, so there's less shelter from the wind and the sun, etc., etc. You could come here for one night, go over to the other site. That's something I've done as well. Drive around and then just roll down the window and say, hey, are you guys coming or going? And sometimes, sometimes people will say, oh, we're leaving here in about an hour. So then you can come back in an hour and snag that spot and grab all your stuff out of here and move it over to the uh, good campground on the other side with trees and the river. Well, we are at the Snaring Campground, and I came here today to show you guys a little bit more about the campsite. Just as you come in here, you'll see the main board, and this is kind of a self-serve. You just grab an envelope here, follow the instructions, put your payment method in there, and you slide that in there. There's like a little metal box kind of in behind here. And basically, it's the same kind of rules that's all across the park. So no more than one RV, or two tents and no more than six people. And it's this this year it's actually $26 per night. Four sections here, A, B, C, and D. A, B, C are like regular camping and the D part will have to walk in there. Uh, those things are probably empty most of the year because you have to kind of walk in is my guess. So if you're backcountry camping and you want a cool place to come and camp in between, you can totally come here. So let's go have a look around inside the campsite, see what the sites look like. We're currently sitting in a campground on the A side. You can see at the back, it's kind of been flattened off and there's like a nice level area if you have a tent that you want to pitch. And on the other side, back in there, it's like a concrete barrier with a little bumper stopper, just so that if you do bring in an RV, this is kind of as far back as you can go. So it manages the damage, potential damage on these campsites downfall is these are made out of concrete and obviously not movable so you're kind of stuck with what you get here if you don't like the location of your picnic table then it's too bad it's gonna stay like that same thing with your fire pit this is kind of in the ground it's not moving anytime soon so the ABCD they all have uh, restrooms and then they'll have like a garbage with some actually uh, lockers so this one is in A, so obviously you have some lockers, but uh, they all have a little shelter too, right down the middle. This is the one inside unit A. It's mainly too if you wanna cook food when it's raining. I often found these super handy. If you get to your site and it's raining, then you can just bring stuff here and cook your food here without getting wet and then wait for the rain to die down and then you can use that as a little bit of a buffer to eat food and then set up your camp afterwards. So let's go check out more portions of the campground. Right at the center shelter, there's actually enough space to park at least five or six vehicles here. This is probably overflow parking if you have more than one vehicle at your campsite. So right in between the B side and C side, the C side is like right over there. And you can see A and B's here. There's another set of washrooms here. And I think all three of the main outlets have the same kind of facilities. You have the washrooms, there's some firewood in behind me here. And then there's a very similar shelter. Uh, this one might be the nicest location of the shelters 
so far is my guess because it's right alongside the river but you don't really have a view it's unfortunate because there's a bunch of brush between the river the snaring river and the enclosure here all of the B campsites the lower numbers a lot of them are along the river and you have access to the river here just from a quick walk After you pass A, B, and C, you reach section D, and it's basically the walk-in section. What I find is kind of neat. There's actually running water right in there, and there's a washroom right over here, like a, just for this section. So I'm in the middle of the parking lot here for the section D, and like you see, there's the washroom right in behind me there, and then there's actually the firewood there. For those who never seen those blue and yellow things, you can stack some wood in there and then once they're stacked you can like line up all the ends so that it doesn't want to topple over and then you can use that to lift it up out of there into your arms so it's easier to carry so if you're alone that's the easier way to carry wood so let's go check out the actual walk-in campsites Well, there's actually nine walk-in sites and there is kind of a little tiny row but I think it's just access for the people that need to uh, maintain the area so there's a washroom there right beside uh, unit six so you don't have to walk very far even if you're at the far end because there's only nine units total and there's garbages right there which is usually uh, the biggest pain if you're doing backcountry camping is the garbage. You don't know what to do with it. You have to pack it in and carry it around with you. So at least this way they have somebody to come and take care of the garbage for you. And in front of campsite number three, you'll find a food, uh, food storage locker. If you don't want to hang it, sometimes to hang it on these pine trees, it's difficult. So you can actually store it in there instead. And I think I might have found a gorgeous site here. So this is campsite number two. You can see you got the flat gravel pad if you need that for your tent. Kind of a nice open area here to camp in. Almost have a view of the river. Not quite. The river kind of veers further away. I can see the river slowly at the very far back. There's that shelter back in there with some garbage and recycling, but also see where that vehicle is parked. You could probably fit three, four, five more vehicles. And there's a couple more vehicles here. And there's a trail that leads to the river in behind there. And then right inside here, there's also another little trail that leads to the Snaring River.
you got the Palisades right there. Then you got Morro Peak at the back. You got Hot Mountain right beside there. And the Snaring River. And that's a Snaring Bridge. Little tiny bridge that runs across there. A lot of current in here this time of year, and the water is right cold and refreshing. Not good for a swim unless you want to get cold, but definitely refreshing <laughs> if you're uh, just want to dip your head in to uh, cool down. I have a feeling that these trails, since there's a campground so close, there's probably a trail that veers up on the Snaring River for a long ways up. And you can actually explore both sides of the river because not too far down south, there's that big green bridge that crosses the Snaring River. And then from there, you could go to the other side and walk up. Even if there's no trail, it would be a cool little, uh, cool little day hike exploration. I hope that all this information helps you guys decide where you want to stay when you come to Jasper National Park. Now, I'm Eric Chablay. These are my adventures. Peace out.